I'm Jeff Abadaka. Eric Strauss. And welcome to Let's Meet in the Middle. This week, it's President's Weekend. So happy President's Weekend, We've by the way. We've had some rough middles lately. By the way. Uh, happy President's Weekend. Thank you. And by the way, it's my birthday weekend, too. Oh, yeah. So and because going, of yeah. that, we're taking the week off. So we're going to repeat our show this week about the session. It's a good show. Well, it's the last week of the session, too. And we... Uh, and so this week's show, we're going to be, we're going to have a repeat. It's Paul Guessing from the Rio Grande Foundation, mm -hmm. Fred Nathan from Think New Mexico. <clears throat> yep. We got a lot of great feedback on that show because we really talked in depth about the uh, about the session. Yep. And and this week, um, well, we we're three weeks into it, so this is going to be a repeat. This, but, <laughs> this but week's going to get deep too. Your your, <laughs> your favorite SB five, it passed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the time this show airs, twenty along party lines, along, I believe. No, right? four Democrats voted against it. Wow. Voted against it. If it was party lines, it wouldn't have voted. Wow, uh, that's keep shocking. Mind, keep, keep in mind, there's four um, smart Democrats still left in this state. Well, I would hope you would think I was a smart Democrat, by the way. Well, you didn't vote. So you the, don't have a the vote. Red, the red flag laws. Um, it looks like it's going to pass. It looks like it's going because it's going to go through the House. And then, and well, then, you, I'm hoping it gets held up in the House, or somebody has common sense to say, "What are we doing here?" Because I, again, and bless that lady's heart, even if it saves one life. Well. You know what you can get done under that premise if it saves one life? Like, you could do a lot of nasty stuff to a lot of people well, they under did, the premise of but hold on. if it saves one hold life. On. It's just they ridiculous. Did, they did change it, and now the only people that can go to court and petition to remove a gun is law enforcement. An individual can still go make a complaint to the law enforcement, but it's now up to law enforcement. So I, so I hope you're right, because I did not read that. that that's I, one of the I, changes they made. What I read was that's one of the that changes they, they made. expanded who could complain. No, 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 no. Who in could fact, file a petition. Fact, see, there, you go, there, you, there you go. No, not reading fine. the bill again. No, it's no, fine. But I read actually, the bill. And actually, it's only law enforcement. I haven't read the amended bill. The so amended, amended bill. Amended they amended it six times, so it's only law enforcement. So Okay. But also, we talked about legalization. I don't think it's going to pass. In fact, we took a look at it. I think they're short three or four votes to get it passed. And really? it's now stuck as of as of this week. It's now stuck. Um, they're running out of time. Well, it's now stuck in judicial. And uh, Senator Cervantes, Joseph Cervantes, who I ran against, uh, is head of judicial. And he's completely against legalization. So your Democratic boy right there is going to block it. I'm, I'm for that guy then. I'm not... Uh, he's not my Oh, so you'd, you'd, you'd vote for him for over me? Guy. You'd vote for him over no, me? No, not over Did you. Did you vote for him over me? No. Did you vote for him over me? We you ran against him? Yeah. He was oh, for guy. governor? Yeah, for governor. Oh. No, and I wouldn't the, vote for him over And then the crime bill, we talked about the crime bill. You're my boy, Blue. Why would I vote for him over you? <laughs> okay, but we talked about the crime bill, um, and it does seem like they're going to give more resources to crime. And make. And uh, the governor's actually, I'm going to give the governor credit. She's actually pushing for stricter um, for stricter penalties for some of that stuff. So If we don't clean up our parole system and bring back bail bondsmen, we are going to be uh, still in a mess in this state. Because like it or not, if you can just ROR because you say, I don't have money. Now, <clears throat> I don't mind indigent people not having to post bail, but you should have to prove you're indigent. Right now, it just seems like all you have to do is say, I can't afford bail, and they let you go. Well, and which again, is, uh, uh, you know, a, a problem because when you have, like, it's like anything. If you have money invested, if you have st skin in the game, you're going to show up to your hearings. If you don't, you're going to bail. And that's well, exactly what's been going on. You're gonna, so they got I, rid of the bond, bail bondsmen. They, they leveled that whole career field, right? And then who's going after the criminals to make them follow up and make sure they go back to the hearings? Nobody. Well, again, so. I think they need to straighten that out a little bit, too, because I still believe the judges have the right to make the decisions, and I think some of them are. So that's one of the things we, we actually talked about. Also, and then the social free security, college, well, the, free college, the, the, free college. Well, the social security <laughs> tax yeah, that they, they were going to, they don't want to get rid of. They've it. shelved it. They were pushing it. Everybody I was talking the about. I thought Democrats for sure, were for the elderly and they, and, and the hardworking guy. They, as of right now, so now you're shelved. paying a tax on a tax of a tax. Even my mom with a 1.7 billion dollar mom, surplus, who's okay for paying her share share of taxes, has even agreed that we should get rid of social security tax. She didn't, re she didn't realize that only 18 states do it, by the way. If you're out there voting Democrat and you're on Social Security, stop doing that. They don't the, like uh, you. The one thing they I haven't, heard, the one thing I haven't clip, heard too much way. about is the Opportunity Fund that the governor wants to start, free college. Yeah, I haven't heard. I think it pretty much has been shelved. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. F-R-E-E. -E. Um, you love that word. It was so stupid. I play well, that sound and, clip and on just, my radio just, show all the time. And it just Because it was so dumb. The rollout was dumb. Well, the way again, she did it was it, just. The session's it, not over yet, but it doesn't. It seems like they've kind of buried it. I feel like Vanna White. F-R. And then she would stop. E. E. 
What's that spell? Okay, you now, know, one of the things movies. that you may not agree with, I think we both agree on this, the Early Child Education Fund, they're still trying to push, they're still trying to push it through to get an extra half a percent of percent out of the permanent funds, which has been the big battle. The governor wants to start, put $300 million aside in the early child education. We have a surplus. I'd rather have that money go into a fund that sets up early child education programs that we don't have to fight over budget anymore, and that money's there endowed. So I, I do agree with that, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of state control from cradle to grave. I'm just not. I'm now, not keep a in fan mind, this, these, the way it had the bills run, mm -hmm. the, bill, the way the little bills run is it's, it, it helps fund scholarships and helps fund private and public because there are 700. Mm -hmm. the, one of the big things private I, I there's, seven, there's 700 uh, private debt daycare. The one of the thing that's starting to push through and hopefully they kill it is McQueen, State Representative McQueen. Gas tax. Is trying to raise our taxes. Tax. Is trying to raise our taxes. Here, raise we, got a, the roof. here we got a billion dollars of we're surplus. Dems. We're dead. You know, going to tax They it. just want to spend more capital outlay. So he's an, All and they again, want to do is raise taxes. $1.7 billion surplus. Give everybody raises. Increase government bureaucracy and raise taxes. Tell me why you vote Democrat. I'd never understand that. Why, if anything, should, why aren't they just scaling back? Well, we're going to have a whole show on that. We're gonna okay. have a, we're gonna have a show on that. So don't don't you know? Are you gonna become a dem? No. God. <laughs> anyway, but that's what our show is gonna be. It's a repeat this week, but that's what our show is gonna be about. It's gonna yeah. be about the session. We have one week left um, of the session, so please join us, Paul. And pray for common sense in New Mexico, and, uh, please. Paul Guessing from Rio Grande Foundation, Fred Nathan's. I think they were great, great guests. guests. As so hey, hope you guys had a great uh, President's weekend. Yep. Um, happy birthday to me. Happy I guess. birthday. Anyway, happy birthday, but, 21. Uh, but hey, enjoy, Still dapper. enjoy the show, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. In a time of a divided America, two people from different points of view sit down to talk about the problems, to talk about ideas, to talk about life, and to find common ground. It is now time for Let's Meet in the Middle with your hosts, Eric Strauss and Jeff Apodaca. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Joining us now is Fred Nathan from the executive director from Think New Mexico, which I get your Think New Mexico things to the radio station they send uh -huh. them. So I get your uh, Think New Mexico. He sends out a wonderful... Oh, no, they do a great and, job. And I'm sure there's ways to sign up. Maybe you could tell people how to get that. And Paul Guessing, uh, founder of Rio Grande Foundation. So before we came on air, they just released the governor's... Budget, well, and let's, 7 remind, 7 let's, let's remind everybody we're, we're talking about the 30-day yep. session coming 30 day up, session. and we're going to be talking about that. And, you know, to remind yep. our, our, our viewers that the 30-day session is really constitutionally supposed only about the budget. Supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So the governor, has, the governor has, to, has the authority to call up things, which they do yep. every year. So that's really what we wanted to have you guys on today yep. to talk about. Some of and so stuff. far, an 8.4% increase over last year's spending, which... It seems like every time there's it's a governor about, in it's charge, about, it's about 12%. the spending goes up, the taxes go up, the administration goes up. But um, where, where, where do you want to start with the 30-day call sheet? Do uh, you want to start on the budget and the increase in spending? Yeah. The $7.7 .7 billion budget? Yeah. Democrats, well, you got to love the spending. When Governor Martinez <laughs> left office, the general fund budget was $6.3 billion. So now we're, you know, approximately one5 up from that and I just contrast what happens here in New Mexico with what happens in uh, Colorado, our neighbors to the north, long term, much more uh, fast growing, strong yeah. growing state. Uh, they have an income tax cut coming into play, 4.63 to 4.5 thanks to their restrictions on spending. They're not going through the same oil boom we are, so they don't have quite the amount of revenue that we have in New Mexico. These are unique, special times in our state. And a big part of what the Rio Grande Foundation is really concerned about is taking advantage of this one-time opportunity for uh, initiatives that we think will really change New Mexico for the better long-term for our children and well, grandchildren. So, so, so for our viewers, really on her call sheet and out of this budget that she's, she's, she's requesting at $7.7 .7 billion, the, uh, they're going to be. We're going to be hearing a lot about the Opportunity Scholarships, which is her free college for everybody, 55,000 students, 35 million dollars per year. <laughs> um, she's going to be. We're also talking about now. This is something I kind of agree with. 320 million dollars, not to spend, but create an endowment for early child education. I agree with you. I think that's a, a smart idea. idea. They're not spending that. They're putting that money aside, so there's no more fighting over early child funding, right? So I think that's a good idea. Um, 
And then they talk about tax reform, things like that. One of the things that is going to be a hot topic is legalization, legalization of marijuana. And we've had many, we've had many experts on for this. Um, talking about legalization, I want, I want to hear where you guys stand, because I think, Paul, I think you agree with it mm -hmm. a little bit. I personally, I, I sat with Pat Davis last week and talked a little, a little bit about the hemp and the cannabis industry in New Mexico. Um, Pat feels like they'll get the votes, but he does agree. Um, between the Republicans and the Democratic senators last year, they've lost 13 uh, votes within the Senate, but they think they can get about eight or nine back, so they might be two or three uh, vote short to get it to the governor's desk, which she said she will sign. Where, do you, where does your organization stand on the legalization? And we'll start with Paul, because I know that's going to be a hot topic for the next 30 days. We do support it. Uh, we don't support the state-run liquor store model that was discussed in the session last year in right. 2019. That would be a total disaster in our opinion. Colorado is, generally speaking, the model that we think makes the most sense with some tweaks to New Mexify it uh, and regulate it to make sure it doesn't become a problem in local communities. But uh, I think it is a worthwhile uh, thing to do. We should not be sending people to jail for uh, ingesting marijuana into their bodies. And, and I recognize that the state's going to want its cut. It would be great for once for New Mexico to undercut Colorado on taxes, to have lower tax it's rates than New Mexico, it's than uh, Colorado happen. does. But it's uh, not going to happen. Fred, where do you think New Mexico, I don't know if they've, you guys have really ever covered this topic. but Yes, and I should preface this. We don't have an official position. It's not something that we've ever studied, but I'll give you my personal opinion sure. based on the fact that I have three teenagers. I, I have real concerns that we're going to, in a, in a state that already has an epidemic yeah. with opioids, yeah. already has severe and chronic alcohol problems, not just DWI, but cirrhosis of the liver, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, but it seems almost inevitable, and, and I do agree with those that want to legalize that, you know, we're just breeding disrespect for the law, which is never a good thing. So my position personally would be, if we're going to legalize this, then let's heavily regulate it. And what a lot of people don't understand about this issue is the marijuana that our generation, just broadly speaking, I'm nearly 60, uh, it's like one-fourth or one-fifth the potency of today's. Well, so I would regulate the potency of it and say, if we're going to legalize it, we need to bring down the potency because the scientists say that among adolescents who smoke a lot, it, it creates cognitive problems the later more, off in life. I'll tell the you. more they smoke it, the more potent they want it, the more high they want to get. It's like any, like alcohol, you always start with a beer, then you move to that's shots, right. because they always want to model it after with alcohol's legal, so let's <coughs> make, rec and see why the recreational? I'm, I'm on your, your camp for the hemp and the cannabis and the medical. Why do, the we, me need, the medical cannabis. Why yeah. do we need recreational marijuana well, in a city that's ravaged by crime, murder, poverty, alcoholism, opioids, gangs? Uh, let's add pot. Great. Well, what, again, what could go wrong? A couple of things. Well, let me, let, me, let me get two cents in here because a couple yeah, of things. Ahead. Fred, one, yes. you know, I, my dad signed the Medical Marijuana Act in 1978. In 1980, I actually used medical marijuana to get through chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, experts are telling me today, and I, I, well, this is where I agree with you guys, is the marijuana I was smoking going through chemo was probably 17, maybe 20% THC. And today it's as high as 70, 70, 70 to 77 <laughs> percent. Right. Uh, so we see the medical benefits of it. On the other side, legalization, it just, again, when you talk to, look, on the criminal element of it, um, first of all, I think it helps opiate addiction. I think it helps that side of it. So I think we'll see that okay. go down with legalization. Number two, it takes the criminal uh, element and the gang element completely out of it, as long as we don't overtax uh, it. Because the gangs no. are going to, they're going to do traffic opioids and but the heroin doing, but they're already and the, doing that. the meth so just all you're doing is taking a fraction of what what's uh, illegal and you're taking a fraction of the illegal drugs away from their palate well, of they, a, illegality it's like it makes no sense and and, and also in california just did this and the black market was almost unaffected yeah so we right. shouldn't kid well, ourselves the problem, and they're the whole mountains but growing the, it illegally the, the problem with california is they've limited Retail uh, retail space to sell it, so there's a major demand, yes. and there's a there's a there, so that's you're the, right. They've actually created a bigger a bigger black market because they legalized it, but then they've limited retail stores, so the demand's not keeping up with the with the supply side of it. So that's right. creating a much bigger area. But let's get to another topic because first of all, I think I, I personally 
I hope I'm wrong, but I personally don't think they're going to find delays not to get it through, and I don't think they're going to fast track it. So I don't think legalization is going to happen this year. Personally, I hope I'm wrong. Pat Davis feels he, they're going to get the votes um, to get the it through. The only Republicans you had voting for it were the state-run model. That's, that, that's the Republicans again, that would have voted for that. They took that off the table. I don't see it making through this session, especially in a 30-day. I don't know what this has to do with it. Well, I guess because the economics, economics, yeah. of, economics of, of marijuana. Well, let's talk about something else. We're going to get one, drunk on well, pot one money other like one everything other else. She, the, one of the other things on the call sheet is her opportunity scholarships, free college. Horrible and idea. Think New Mexico, have you guys looked at this? Have you thought about this? Horrible idea. We haven't, but we've been tangentially involved because we've been working on the lottery scholarships. Right. And there's a lot in the lottery scholarships, a lot of history yep. that can inform this. So when they first did it, they made it available to everybody. And you did have an ex some people that shouldn't have gone to college were going to college, right. partying on the state dime. Yep. And so if we're gonna do this, we need to be smart about making sure that we give it to those kids who are most likely to be successful well, in college. Not, there's no plan for it. That's the thing. Right. I, she I, rolls I, out FREE, -E, and there's no plan. There's, so if I don't take the ACT, do I still get it? If I, okay, me, do I, what if I want to go back to my PhD and get an FREE -E free college? Wouldn't it make sense to spend on people working, gainfully employed, and saying, now if you want to go get your master's degree, I could see spending on that. But a 1.8 kid that didn't want to even go to high school, suddenly you're going to give them free college? No, and, one of the and, things and look at the history of this real quick. What was the history you found, so the viewing public knows, with the free lottery scholarship money? What happened within the first six months? Well, you know, many kids have gotten through on lottery scholarships. Right. There's a lot of success stories. Um, a lot of people actually in the in the legislature, and some people in my office. So we don't right. know it works, but too many dropped out along the way, second year, third year, even. Even and first year, there was a yeah. sixty percent and well, higher that's the biggest, rate the biggest for biggest the free rate. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and I was on the. Uh, I was on UNM's educational board, and we saw between freshman and sophomore years a 43% dropout. But well, Paul, oversized classrooms. Paul, 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 uh, yeah, go ahead. Look, I think I think there's at least three of us. Paul, where do you guys stand on this? Is this is this something you think is a good idea for New Mexico? Where's the real grandstand on? No, uh, we're not big fans of this. First and foremost, I agree with Fred, and the history of the uh, lottery scholarship is worth studying. Uh, it, it's not going to, this new program is not going to solve any problem that wasn't originally attempted by the lottery scholarship. Yep. Uh, we need to address our K-12 system so that the students are prepared, not remediating their failed high school experience in college. We need to have a job market and an economy in this state that's worth young people sticking around once they do get the college degree, uh, that we're not training the future workforces of Texas and Arizona and Colorado, et cetera. Yep. Uh, of course, price inflation is kind of at the heart of the experience with the lottery scholarship is you get this new pot of money at the uh, higher ed level. Well, my and my, big, my they, biggest concern is, well, you know, Fred, you, I remember calling you when I first announced, yeah. uh, you either told my mom or you told somebody like, oh, I like Jeff's plan. And I think at the time, think New Mexico was looking at higher education and, and the waste within higher education. Right. And I had found, we had found close to $250 million of waste at higher education. So I've, ki I've kind of said, I've kind of said, if, if we can streamline the university system and have a scholarship type of program, but also include training programs, after school programs that we have cut from high schools and create pathways for our, for our children, because let's be very frank, not every kid wants to go to college. Not every kid has to go to college. Or should go to college. Or should go, or to, college. Should go to college. We're short, you know, for, the, for, the, for, the, for, our, for our viewers, we're short 3,000 trade skill positions in New Mexico today that's driving our construction costs up. I sit on a board at Yes Housing. Our construction costs going up or on, a, on a project we're doing on the west side, almost 30% in 12 months because of construction costs, right. only because we just don't have enough workers. Right. Don't and, have the supply. The, and, and name one state where there isn't these programs where if you increase the amount of funding for scholarships, guess what else increases? Tuition costs, shocker alert, every time. This, and college presidents themselves say this is a bad idea. Why aren't we listening to the people that run the university? I saw that. The, yeah, the, that most, was surprising. Most, most president. And well, again, because my they, they've, they're at the grassroots. They know that right. when you overstuff college 
uh, classes with kids who don't want to be there, are there because it's F-R-E-E -E free and not something they E-A-R-N-E-D, <laughs> right? Okay, you're using this. <laughs> so free and earned, is it, well, that's how the governor rolled it out. It was a, a, one of the worst press conferences I have ever seen in my life. Anyway, so canned, one, one of the it things, was ridiculous. One of the things I don't know if they're going to have time to get through, and I don't know, you, you, it's not on your guys' agenda, but I know we've always talked about it, is they are going to look at the parole, parole reform. reform. And I think that's real important because the judges are just going to argue with each other whose fault yeah. is it against the DAs or not. Yeah. But it has to be solved. Well, and now the Supreme Court's meeting, and they're forming a committee to review pretrial detention uh, rules, right. which, in my opinion, whatever they have right now, you don't even need to review it. Just wad it up, file 13 it, and they need to come up with more stringent uh, pre-trial rules where these guys, they, the judges say they're, the judges are blaming the rules. We know this. Remember this? Again, 43% of the judges blame the rules. 57% of the judges are keeping them all in. So, uh, but, but hey, anyway, but, uh, okay. th that's what's on the governor's call, okay. right? And so we'll be talking a little bit about that. But we're going to come back after this because we're going to go to Think New Mexico's agenda. Just yep. so our, our, list, our viewers, you guys have an agenda. You lobby and you press this agenda on behalf of New Mexicans. And that's what your organizations do. So we're going to get into that. Um, but don't forget, uh, you can follow us on Let's so Meet in the Security Middle. Well, we're going to get into up, that. Yep. Don't forget, we're going to follow into, you can follow us live at uh, Facebook on Let's Meet in the Middle. And, uh, and you can also follow Eric on House of Strauss, yep. Democrats for Democracy. One House Strauss on Twitter. One House Strauss on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, hey, New Mexico, we'll be back right after this. Thank you, Indigo Mortgage. And Ben Lucero does a great yeah, job on mortgages. Fabulous. We'll be back right after this. Find us on Facebook at Let's Meet in the Middle, or you can email us at meetinthemiddlenm at gmail.com. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Uh, Jeff Apodaca, Eric Strauss joining us again. Um, we, are, we are covering your guys' kind of 30-day call sheet for um, the governor's 30-day session. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get in with Fred and Paul, um, the repeal on double tax on Social Security and why you feel like Social Security is getting double taxed. And then we'll get, maybe we can segue to kind of you guys' sweet spot, and that's the gross receipts tax as well. Well, keep in mind, yeah. Think New Mexico sits an agenda, and so does yep. Rio Grande, sits an agenda. And this mm -hmm. is, Fred, this is one of your big points Correct. this year. Yes. Is, and I think we've also, because we're, only, we're one of seven or eight states, that 13, 13 states mm -hmm. that tax Social Security. Right. I actually, on the campaign Four. trail, on the campaign trail, I said Four. we should not tax any retirement funds at all. Um, Why would you? Well, uh, let's talk about yeah. that. So let's talk the history first about it. Yeah, sure. Because so we didn't used to. That's right. Um, this started in 1990, uh, page 29 of a 30-page complicated tax bill for the first time tax Social Security benefits in New Mexico. And you're correct, only 13 states tax it. But of the 13 states that tax it, we're the second harshest. Right. Oh, right. And, and there's a fairness issue here. There's no other government benefit that we tax, not Medicare, not Medicaid, not food stamps, not TANF, but we tax this, which makes no sense. And in a state where about 80% of New Mexicans have $10,000 or less saved for retirement, yeah. Uh, this is the single most immediate and impactful thing we can do to help those people. And we just learned this week that about 11% of households led by grandparents are raising grandchildren. Right. Yep. The parents are not in that's the picture. The new, that's yep. the new census uh, numbers that just came out. I exactly. Yeah, right. So there's the fairness argument. There's also a double taxation argument, which you alluded to, which is, and a lot of people don't realize this, but when you work and earn money, your, your money is deducted for Social Security, but you're also taxed, taxed at that point. Right, yeah. Now you're taxed again, at least for the last three decades, on the benefits on the other end. And, um, you know, just counterproductive. Uh, the other part of this is economic development. Uh, the ARP uh, points out that uh, seniors about, when they spend their Social Security benefits, that goes around 1.71% again. So that's a multiplier effect. It would be good for the economy 
to take this tax off. Then there, there's the whole issue that all these uh, magazines, Kiplingers and so forth, they, they annually do a study on which states are the best to retire to and which states are the worst. We're consistently on the on worst. worst. And the number one fact that they point out yeah, is that we have the second harshest tax, tax. on Social Security well, and one of only 13 states. Well, you know, it's taxes. funny because back in the, everybody always goes back to back in the 50s, you know, Phoenix, Denver, and Albuquerque were all about the same size yep. and what happened. And Arizona aggressively marketed themselves as a retirement community yep. because retired people spend 85, 90% of the money yep. into the economy. And that helped drive their economy early on in their stages. Uh, Paul, on your guy's side, point. Rio Grande, what are you seeing from that? Because I've been saying all along, retirement funds should never be taxed in any state. What no. do you guys, what do you guys stand on this? Yeah, um, well, we support uh, what Fred's doing here with regard to Social Security taxes. We think some other priorities in terms of tax reform we can talk about later uh, should be just as high, if not higher. But there's plenty of money in the budget. There's plenty of room for multiple types of tax cuts, tax reform. The gross receipts tax is what we're looking at. But we've signed on to Fred's effort. We support his uh, agenda on this particular issue. It is definitely time, given the scope surplus. of New Mexico's surplus, that we should be cutting some taxes. Doesn't mean we're going to, you know, use all of the surplus revenue for tax cuts, but it, it is definitely time for some tax relief well, for New well, Mexico. Speaking of that, how many, how many, real quick, Jeff? I'm sorry. How many tax reform, tax cuts, do you think we'll see in this 30-day session? I'm going to call out a magic number: none. Because every time there's a Democrat in charge, all that happens is taxes go up. Well, the, the tax so reform. There you go. Well, we'll talk about that too. But the I, tax I actually am more optimistic than Eric. I am <laughs> hopeful <laughs> that there will be two. Yes. Uh, and two. we and which, look. Look. Which, I, I agree with Eric. Think? I agree with Eric that 2019 last session, with the billion dollar surplus, with everything no that happened, there's no it. reason to raise no taxes. Right. I'm hopeful that we'll see gross receipts tax reform. And there is talk about it. There's, there's very talk serious about talk about, about that. Like about and Social Security tax. I think if we get those. The dying committee, but go ahead. I, well, here's the good news. I mean, Democrat and Republican senators and House members are putting in bills to repeal bills the Social Security right. tax so there, so or there, to reduce it. Right. So there definitely will be at least one, and I think Paul's right, there'll be two, because somebody's going to do something on GRT, which would be germane. Speaker Egolf is talking about yeah, that. Yeah, the speaker's so I'm, talking about that. And too. I know Jason Harper, so it's a, uh, Jason Harper's a Republican right. legislator from right. here in Rio Rancho. So we've got bipartisan agreements, at least to an extent, on both of these priorities. This is something that needs to happen now. I, I was not aware that it's 11 percent. I thought it, I knew they were taxing Social Security. I had no idea it's that and the, high. And the problem, That's and, egregious. And, and at the end of the show, yeah. we're going to talk about the legislative session uh, and the format of it. But, but Fred, you guys are also talking about um, the private retirement investment accounts. Yes. Explain to our audience a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So in the private sector, only 40% of workers in New Mexico have access to a private personal retirement account. Mm -hmm. That's last in the country. Nobody's doing great. Minnesota's first. They have 60%. And obviously the reason in New Mexico that we're at the bottom is we have smaller businesses. They're just trying to keep the doors open and so forth. And so this is a great way uh, essentially, it's like the 529 plan, which your viewers may be aware of, which is where the state makes it easy for people to save for their college okay. retirement. This is the same concept. It would be overseen by the state, but paid for by the participants themselves. They would have about less than 1% deducted to pay advisory fees and to pay the state to hire a company like Fidelity to make these accounts available. But the most important thing is it would be voluntary voluntary for the businesses and just take that burden away from them and they don't have to match they just have to sign up their employees the most exciting thing about this is that behavioral economists will tell you people are 15 times more likely to save by automatic payroll deduction oh, yeah. and that's all that you do you, you you turn over your employees essentially and say sign them you up know, funny and they can opt out if they don't want to do it and I, and I have a small company now, and we're, and we're hiring more and more people, and we're having conversations about this, but it is very difficult for a brand new startup with small employees yeah. when you're not making any money yet. Right. Um, and then when you talk to, I think you said it the, the best, some of the progressive side of my, my party 
has argued with me because on the tax reform portion of it, I'm trying to remind, I'm trying to, to, to remind people small businesses is maybe a 6, 8, 10% profit margin. They don't make a lot of money. Yeah. It's the big businesses that, that they hear about those profit margins. So um, I think it's a great idea. It, I mean, you guys are pushing it, but I don't see it on the call sheet. Do you think it's even going to get addressed this time around? I, I think it's going to get, we met with the governor's office. They seemed open to it. Um, we've got AARP supporting it. Um, and I, I think it'll make it onto the call. And I think it's, a, frankly, a great idea. When you think about the wealth disparity in this country, really what it is is about half the country is invested in the stock market, usually through their personal retirement account, mm -hmm. and half isn't. Stock market went up 30% last year. On average, since 1920, it's been up, on average, about 10%. Bank accounts about 2%. That's why we have this, you know, all these economists are so mystified. That's, if we could get 100% of private sector workers into these personal uh, retirement accounts, I think we could reduce some of that wealth disparity that we see across society. Well, where do you get, where does Rio Grande stand on this? We're not actively supporting, nor are we opposing this kind of policy, the, the kind of issue we have. We're pretty uh, hardcore libertarian on a lot of these the things, yeah. and there is some government spending, kind of a government program that would have to be set up, and that's something that we're not necessarily willing to jump on board with. But Fred's points are absolutely spot on. It's great to get people involved in the markets and in investing in their retirements. And about the inequality issue, it's absolutely uh, a real problem because the people who are making it, the people who are doing very well in this economy are involved in the stock market because we've seen such great gains out of that. Well, and, well, but that's also, but my issue too with the government getting involved in, <laughs> in this, uh, you know, pushing retirement, like this is something you should be doing as an individual a free American, you have every ability to open up a 403B, a 403B, you know, you can open up your retirement accounts. Most competitive businesses have these. And is, at what point do we say, hey, it's your responsibility to save for a rainy day? You know, like, well, we and quit buying, that. you we know. have that Social Security program <laughs> right, that we exactly. talking about. And if we reformed at the federal level Social there you Security go. That would take to do private accounts, lot. that would be a much better situation, in my opinion. We're, we're here in New Mexico. That's, we can't yeah. solve again, that problem. I, I, but, but I yeah, think, that's not gonna... but again, it's not really a government-run program. It's just a government infrastructure okay. put together by the that's, private sector. That's exactly right. Don't get hung up on the government because the participants are the ones that are ultimately right. subsidizing it, the same as right. the 529 plan. State government's not paying for that. And, and, as long and, and, as they're not mandating and a, a business, it doesn't pile more paperwork on a business because that's one of the big roadblocks that people don't talk about enough in terms of entrepreneurship, in terms of opening up a company is all those forms and documents. And I got a, I got one right here that just another one that comes with, they come all the time with this stuff. Well, no, but, but talking about social security, look, I think, I think social security is a great program. The issue is that the federal government, our legislators at the federal level, have literally taken $2.7 trillion out of the Social Security pool. So in reality, the taxpayer has taken their own money out of the money that we've paid into this yeah. because of, our, because of the, the, our, our, the, the, the Congress at the federal level. So it's like, hey, Congress, let's put the $2.7 billion trillion 2.7 trillion back, back in, in. American Social, Secur pocket, Social Security is fine. Where you took it, right? Where you took it. Social Security. But fine. here's one of my issues. As we started the show, is that politicians rarely want to cut programs or save money or give money back to the taxpayer. It's always here's a surplus. Let's tax and spend more and more and more. And it's on both sides of the. One coin. thing I wanted, because I know it was on your agenda in the past, not this yeah. time around. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Capital outlay. And yep. it's not that we're against capital outlay, it's the way we kind of process this and do it. And then they just released the governor's capital outlay call. Mm -hmm. Governor Lujan Grisham, her third percent is on there because you can see where it's sponsored. Anonymous across the board, every place else. Is there any push in this short session? I don't see it, but is there any push down the road that you see capital outlay is ever going to change? I think it's going to change next year in terms of the anonymous, the anonymous nature of it. Right. I think um, there's a, a groundswell now, it's particularly among the younger legislators who, who can't believe this system, that the public's not entitled to know how their tax dollars are being yeah. spent. We almost passed it last year. It, it passed unanimously in the House, failed in the Senate by like one or two right. votes. And I think after this next election, it will come back 
and it will, for, for the first time, the public will be f able to find out who's paying for these, you know, doggy drinking fountains in Las Cruces, your hometown, right. and zoo animals and Clovis and some of these other things that aren't even infrastructure. Yeah. But I agree with you. I, I'm in favor. Of, we need infrastructure in the state, but the way we do it is it's crazy. Just, uh, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And for, the, for, and for our audience, because the way we do it, almost two and a half to three billion dollars sit around in bank accounts mm -hmm. for the banks not helping us on an average of six years. So. Well, there's two issues. There's the transparency issue, and then there's the merit issue. N none of these decisions are based on urgency or merit. It's just, just so your viewers understand, it's like taking a pie and splitting it into 112 sections, and then they just spend and everybody it. Everybody gets to get their favorite piece of the pie. Right. Right, and we're not looking at what are the most important things for health and safety that need to be funded right away, and right. what are our priorities? Well, we're going to be back after this break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Rio Grande Foundation's agenda for the, for, the, for the session. So we'll be back right after this. Get along down the road. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Uh, joining us again, Fred and Paul, um, the Rio Grande Foundation. We want to get to more of your agenda. Specifically, uh, let's talk about state para uh, pension fund reform. Mm -hmm. And let's start there, and then we'll work our way through kind of your, your big hitters for the 30-day session. Absolutely. Well, to her credit, uh, Governor Lujan Grisham has put on the table the issue of reforming New Mexico's pension system, one of the two systems, I should say, Public Employee Retirement Administration, PERA. Uh, the other one is the ERB, which is educator-oriented one. So this is more general public employees. Uh, it's underfunded to the tune of about $6 billion, and we need to address that situation. It's funny, you could almost call this the retirement uh, uh, show because we talked about Social Security, we talked right. about and just, uh, and just, and just a lot so of our audience yeah. knows, this is the pension funds for state employees, mm -hmm. teachers employees, people that have worked the, for state government and now get a, a pension on retirement. Those funds are about 40% underfunded. Yeah. Somewhere in and there. So there's some basic approaches that can be taken. There's money coming out of the, the kitty, the taxpayer dollars. Uh, that's a, a prerequisite, but not something that we are super excited about. There's more money contributed by employees, government employees, and that's something that I think definitely needs to happen. There's assumptions that are made about those future returns, and uh, public employee pensions across the country have been notorious for overestimating the returns that are going to achieve. Why, why do you think there's a shortage right now? Is it is it the guys running the fund? Is it the bad investments we've done? Like why hasn't the why isn't the fund kept pace? You know, for both of you, because we've all talked about it. Why why do you guys think the fund hasn't kept pace with where we need to be? I would say first and foremost, it's been an unwillingness on the political class to contribute what they need because that's a line item in the budget. Right. And it's not really exciting for a politician today to actually have the check written that's going to go to some government employee that's retiring in 5, 10, 25 years, whatever it might be. That's the first and foremost issue. The assumptions being made and the aggressiveness, assuming we're going to get 8.5% every year on these uh, pension programs, it, it just doesn't happen, especially the way they have to invest. You and I can they do that. They invest very conservative. Right, right because yeah. they have, they have the, it's not just, you know, we're, in, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, we know one person is going to retire in, in, you know, 20 years, but they're dealing with a whole pool of people, so they have to keep that money a lot more liquid and have it ready to go. They can't endure a 5, 10 year down, down period. Uh, with that money. They need it available pretty quickly. Now, let's face it, too, uh, the teachers are getting older. 
Uh, not enough young teachers are coming into the system. Right. You have uh, a shortage of mm -hmm. two to 300 teachers, and, and they, they were bragging about cutting it by like 30%, you know, hiring 30% of the 100% of teachers they need. Uh, and so new money's not coming into the system is another big problem. Well, that's the ERB, yeah. that's a different issue, yeah. which we do think should be on the table for reform, but we're gonna take this one bite at a time and yeah. hopefully you get pensions at the public employee level now, outside Paul, of education. Now, done. Paul, one of, one of the things on your guys' agenda, we, we talked a little bit on the last segment, the GRT reform, you're yes. hoping it, it drops that a little bit. And I know there's been a big push and the governor's put a, a committee together of reforming the complete tax code, and we talked about that on the campaign, that our state has just a wacky tax system. We need to restructure the entire system. Now, personally, I don't believe in a 30-day session it's gonna get, they're gonna, they're gonna do anything about it. Lowering the GRT by a half a point that they're talking about might get done. What, what, where, where do you guys stand on that, and where are you guys on the, on the, the So the GRT tax reform, reform is more than just reducing the rates. What the real uh, issue is, is that the GRT, taxes business inputs, especially services provided by contractors. So Rio Grande Foundation or Fred's group, we're pretty small, we don't pay a full-time bookkeeper. If we hire a bookkeeper in Albuquerque or Santa Fe, we have to pay them 7.875% here in Albuquerque and whatever the rate is in Santa Fe. That's on top of all the FICA and all the other federal taxes that that person has to report. If I hire a bookkeeper based in Colorado, they do pay the FICA and all the federal taxes, but they don't pay that seven point, or we don't pay that 7.875 here in Albuquerque. And when you are just by the tax code making New Mexico small businesses uncompetitive, that is a horrible situation. No, and I, and I agree, because one of the things working in the business community, uh, look, I ran media companies and TV stations all over the country. We literally never centralized our accounting system in New Mexico because yeah, New Mexico is the expensive. only one, our GRT, that even systems just don't work that way. And I try to explain to people, I, I don't pe think people realize in New Mexico this isn't a sales tax. No. This is a grocery C tax on no. all services across the board. It hurts small business. It hurts us competitively. Any New Mexico business that wants to do business outside the state of New Mexico is automatically 8 to 10% in the mm -hmm. hole just to be competitive. So that's why local businesses can't really compete in the region more than no. anything else. Absolutely. Uh, everything you said is spot on. Uh, and talking broadly about the tax code, our, our personal income tax is not out of line with our neighboring states. Our property taxes are pretty low, which is kind of in line with our neighboring states. And I'm excluding Texas from this because they have no personal income tax and pretty high property taxes. But I'm talking Colorado, Utah, Arizona, right. et cetera. Uh, it's the gross receipts tax that uniquely makes New Mexico very business unfriendly. And if you're a small yeah. business or entrepreneur, you're starting, you know, Bill Gates, Microsoft, I know that was a long time ago in, in Albuquerque, but if you're starting that business here in New Mexico, you're not hiring automatically the bookkeeper, the attorney, the, this, right. that, and the other thing. And so you're getting taxed out the wazoo on those things. You talked about small businesses, their margins are what, eight to 10%? Well, you're basically flushing that well, down well, the toilet in the form yeah, of right. taxation. taxation. So if we can get that contractor issue done this session, it will be, be huge. a huge win for New Mexico We business. looked at a plan that's pretty simple, and I got attacked by some of the progressives on our, on our party, but we looked at a plan of, first of all, out of the 7.7 .7 billion, 400 million comes from small business, corporate tax. Big guys don't pay it. So our proposal was let's eliminate the corporate tax. Brian Egolf agreed with us on that, so I think there's a push there. Eliminate that, that saves small business 6%. It's about $400 million. Increase people's property tax about 2%. That means all the big boys are paying more property tax. Um, and then change the grocery receipts tax to more of a sales tax and get rid of the 308 exemptions. You would literally help small business by almost 20% and you would generate about $600 million more in tax revenue for the state. That's a pretty simple tax reform. Except you have a lot of people in the state that are land rich, cash yeah. poor, who would yeah. fight the property tax, which Big is tax. revenue that you By the need way, to. Commercial property tax, oh. not residential. Oh, okay. yeah, no, let me I'll clarify. Different. Commercial okay. property That's an tax. Important distinction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's an important business, distinction. business, commercial property tax, not residential. But but you know this all goes to the larger point, which is we need a tax system in New Mexico that looks like the rest of the country. We're out of sync on so many things. Social Security being a big example, GRT being an example. The, yep. the broader goal should be to have a tax system that looks like 
the tax system in other states. Well, let, me, let, sense, let me ask maybe? you, because yeah. Paul, <laughs> one of the things that, that we talked about that I think you guys are pushing that, you know, we have these surpluses. Mm -hmm. So Rio Grande is actually pushing, give some of that tax money back right. to, to the taxpayer. Where are you guys with that? Do you think that's going to come to Because Bill, like Bill, Bill Richardson did that, right? Governor Richardson did that. He did. He did uh, checks, uh, kind of one time. Like $500 only, yeah, or something deal. Like that? Yeah. And that, that's, that was, I think that's the only time I've ever gotten a check living here. That's a third, <laughs> third best option. You know, Social Security and gross receipts tax, I think those should be the primary focus because they're not just one-off issues. They are permanent reforms that are going to make us more attractive, more competitive. Uh, certainly some way, somehow, New Mexico taxpayers need to share in this surplus. Here's my issue yeah. with that, because One, yeah. we, we, we've seen that. When Governor Richardson did that, we saw no boost in the economy. There might have been a boost for like a couple of weeks. Um, well, it was I'm, done in like 2007 or 2008, right before, right before, right before the, the whole yeah. national economy. But historically, economy. when you look at those kind of that programs across, to do but it, when, right. you look around, or when you look around the country and those kind of programs, $500 isn't going to change somebody's life that much, whereas if you put $500 towards more nurses, more services, more something, or even a tax credit or tax break, um, I see those programs working more. So I just don't see how that's going to help the economy. Might help boost it for the month, won't help it for the long term. Well, like I said, it is the yeah. second Fred, best are option. Yeah. Are you guys looking at anything like that? No, we're just focused on the Social Security and just getting that repealed if I, possible. I think that would be huge if you could even pull that off. Quick thoughts on free college. It's just a bad idea. We need to focus on getting our K-12 system in gear, and we need to focus on job opportunities for young people. Maybe there should be a requirement that you spend a couple years working in New Mexico if you get the free college seven, benefit. Seven, seven. Seven our, proposal, our proposal is seven years. Give New Mexico back seven years. Whatever Jeff says. Then, Jeff's then I might go with it. We got about 30 <laughs> seconds left, Fred. Anything from Think New Mexico? Well, if people are interested in this issue on Social Security, I want to encourage them to go to our website and they can contact their legislators from our Action Center, and that's at www.thinknewmexico.org. We're at RioGrandeFoundation.org as well, and people can track the legislative session and how their legislators are voting on freedom issues at our Freedom Index. And don't yeah, forget, do a good job and don't that, forget Paul's uh, a podcast, Tipping yes, Point. Tipping Point, New Mexico. The best guest you've had on yep. so far is? Jeff Apodaca. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. I had to do that. Dude, you and your ego, we need a third chair for your anyway, ego. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I hope this was informative because I think I thank you guys so much for this, but great yeah, information thank today. You. Thanks, thanks for thanks coming, for having coming us. on. Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah. We'll be back right after this. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. I am a nurse. A firefighter. A college student. A mother. And I am an American soldier. I will always be ready for every storm and disaster that threatens my community. I will always be there to protect my neighbors, my family, and my country. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. Army National Guard. Visit nationalguard.com to learn more about part-time service. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Uh, Jeff, let's start with you on some takeaways. No, I want to do a better job of kind of summarizing the show for our viewers, because I had a lot of epiphanies. That's why I know it's a good show. Well, and I, I yeah. want you know, more importantly, we've got a lot of information today. Yeah. But if you go to thinknewmexico.org mm -hmm. or RioGroundFoundation.org, you can see a lot of the stuff we talked about. And then yep. look, we, we put our show on YouTube. We put yep. our show on Facebook Live, so you can always yep. see that too. But here's the takeaway. Every episode, by the way. Right, and right. they look really good. No, they're good. They're yeah, good. good. But here's the takeaway, because I think I think Fred's group and Paul and Paul's group, what they do is they go and they lobby all year long, and this is this 30-day mm -hmm. session. Now, just so everybody understands, the 30-day session it constitutionally it's only supposed to go in and approve the budget and move on, which but is not going to happen. Well, the governor has the authority to do the call yeah. sheet. So, a couple of things. One, we talked about this on our campaign. The governor wants a 4% annual raise for teachers, mm -hmm. but I think we should take it a step further. For all state employees, <coughs> we should be giving raises. So I agree with that on her $7.7 .7 billion budget. 
the three hundred twenty million dollar. Hold on, okay, go ahead. ahead. The three hundred twenty million dollar endowment fund for early education. It's not spending three hundred twenty million dollars. She's taking a chunk, a third, basically, of our surplus. Of our, of our oil and gas surplus, and she's going to endow it and create a new fund so there's no more fighting over the $26 billion that we have about we now can fund early child education. I think that's extremely important. Um, and then um, I think we agree on uh, the uh, opportunity fund for free college. All of us, even our Train guests, thought it, was a thought it was a bad idea. I do like repealing, and we've been saying this but the whole see, time. But this is what I get nervous about. Let me stop you there for a second. In terms of an opportunity fund and telling kids free college, why, where is any kind of merit-based system on that? So if I'm a kid who's a slacker in high school, what message am I hearing if it's college? No, I'm being honest. No, no, you. and I don't disagree. Common sense again. What message am I hearing if it's free college? See, I, I, and by, well, by no, the way. that's what the message she sends, right? And by the way, here's a better plan. Let's put $35 million into a refund endowment fund. And look, we need doctors. We need nurses. Absolutely. We need, we need Make teachers. Make a seven-year commitment so you to guys, be a doctor you in guys Mexico. Go to, we'll go to one of our schools, I'm, I'm get educated, yep. even do your residency somewhere yep. else, come back and work for, for seven years, we'll refund you and all you that And you know money. we have a program like that at UNM where we can, if you want to be a doctor, you can sign a commitment to be a doctor in New Mexico, and they'll pay but for it, your tuition, but it's not as good as it it's should It's not as good as it should be. And we only take um, 102 students. Correct. So we also need to increase that um, across the board. Um, but we also... So look, uh, my big takeaway on this one, I'll tell you the big epiphany I had. I had no idea that we are at 11% tax on Social Security. Mm -hmm. That's egregious. Oh, see, I thought you knew uh, that. It's I, ridiculous. No, but it, but oh, how it's it, ridiculous. But if you're, this is what drives me nuts about New Mexico. By the voters. way, let me remind if everybody, let me remind everybody, that's 4 to 7% you've been paying in your tax. entire life. It's Absolutely. a double tax. So if you add that up, it's 18%. Yeah, okay, so look, if you're an elderly Democratic voter, and they, the Democrats don't get this off the table, why would you vote for them again? If they're taking 11% of your money off the top, money that you've already earned, because I'm, I'm not against Social Security. You're paying into the system. When you reach Social Security age, you should get the money back, and no one should be taxing you well, on I, the money that you got taxed on let, already. Let's talk Social Security. Okay. I, I think our audience needs to know, and this is where the state senator, U.S. senators and our Congress people come in and act. U.S. Congress, over the years, didn't, ha didn't happen last year, they have literally stolen, because I say stolen, $2.7 trillion out of Social Security. And I tried to explain to someone the other day, when Al Gore was running for president, he'd always mm -hmm. joke about, we put funding in there, we're going to close, uh, uh, close the box, throw away, lock the key, and throw away the throw key. key yeah. That's what he was talking about. He was like, we're done taking money out of Social Security. I'm Al Gore, we, we, I invented <laughs> the Internet. He did, by the way. <laughs> we, I know, that's a whole different story. But my, my point is, is this is another way, and our retired community, they spend 83% of our money into the economy so every day. So we can meet in the middle on getting rid of taxing Social Security. Absolutely. I'm, I'm I in think on even our guest agreed with that. I, I want to meet in the middle about just lowering taxes in general. I cannot stand the bloated, swollen government, another 8.4% increase in spending. So what, when, is ever, when are we ever going to shore the dam up, say enough, and well, start tightening the budget? Here's something we didn't talk about with our guests, and I wanted to get to it, but we ran out of time. But look, let's be very frank here. We have a volunteer legislator. You get what you pay for in anything you do. It would cost us about $6 million versus a $7.2 billion budget. That's nothing. To basically pay these legislators and serve all year long with a full staff and be in session 180 days out of the year instead of this 30 to 60 I, I'll days. I agree with that with term limits. I, I, I'm okay, okay. With, with term limits. So if you want to come to the middle on that, I'm fine. Spend your $6 million, get I a staff, that, and I think but then that would be a push. You, you, get, you get two terms and you're done. None of this, I'm going to die in the roundhouse. I'm okay with 12 years. It takes, it takes a couple oh, of years. Oh, man, the, and that's the representative, too long. No, it takes a couple of years. And I think what's going to happen is... is two terms... Out the door you 12 go. Twelve-year term. Twelve years. You could go. You'd be up. You're to, telling me after two terms you can't find someone to take their place. You, the way the legislator works, and by the way, going into the system, it, it's 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 a little tricky. You know, being there for twelve years, I think that's enough. I think it's. I, I think, think twelve years is I too think, much. I think I, we're years. gonna have to come down. Kay. I'll give you seven, ten, eight. 
ten. No, it's not. <laughs> By the way, too long. I mean, would, would it be easy it's if it was long. just us that we oh, could make those decisions? We, let's see. Why don't we just take over the world? But hey, don't forget. Uh, we'll be back after this. But don't forget Wouldn't it be Indigo. Nice if you could don't just don't do forget. That. Don't forget uh, Indigo Mortgage. Uh, ben Lucero does a great job. Make sure you go get a mortgage from him. Yeah, and absolutely. veterans, veterans, he does a great VA program absolutely. there. Absolutely. And don't forget, you can follow us at Twitter at Let's Meet in the Middle, Facebook Every Live. Every episode on YouTube, by we'll the way. We'll be back right after this. If you want to improve your reading skills, don't feel like you're alone. Thousands of us in northern New Mexico can't read or write. I used to be just like you. And today, I not only read and write, I write movies like Blood and Blood Out. Call the New Mexico Coalition for Literacy today, please, at 1-800-233-7587. Get that tutor, learn how to read and write, and open up a whole new life for yourself. Paid for by the New Mexico Coalition for Literacy and aired in cooperation with this station. Right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Again, you can follow us on Facebook. Well, we got a Twitter question, well, you too. Know, and I, I, why, don't, why don't we I, take that? Well, and I, I, got, okay. a, I got, got a call the other day saying, Jeff, why are you always on your computer? Well, I want to well, remind yeah, people, I'm kind of the guy doing Facebook Live. I'm kind of I'm doing trying to interact But one of the guys. questions yeah, was, if you get free college, you know, what would be your GPA? Again, I'm, I'm just... I'm a 3.0 guy. Well, I'm just against it. So I don't I'm, think I'm a 3.0 guy. So in my point, I don't believe in giving away free money if you don't earn it. Right. So um, have you ever done that with your kids? What? Like you just no, they got to do chores they, they, for their money. So how are but you here's against the funny, my plan? Here's the funny thing: we're taking. Okay, out so if you just give kids free money and you say, "Oh, you don't have to do the dishes. You're not part of this house." Are you serious? <laughs> that doesn't happen in my household. Right. Right. So why would you want it for our I, state? Again. <laughs> I'm out. For, I'm out for the opportunity scholarships. Okay, um, good. The so other, you're, the other you're just question, out well, the, the other whole thing. Yeah. Okay, good. The other question. Well, and again, then let's let's bring these programs back for trade skills, for after school Absolutely. programs, things I'm like all that. In. Yeah. If a kid wants free welding school because there's six hundred thousand hey, shortage of welders and, and hey, in Texas, Governor Lujan Grisham, Brian Eagle, Peter Worth, uh, you guys are listening to us. Look, man, you know I hope I'm you okay. Are. I'm okay refunding them. If they're going to go into the trades, nursing, uh, teaching, yep. doctors, those yep, are professions absolutely. we need today. Then I'll then we'll pay back. The yeah, other question, then the other I'm fine with F R E E. The other question, because then you're a functioning the other, member the other of the community. The other question we got go today, ahead. the other question we got today was about cannabis and why don't you think it's going to pass? I just don't think they have the votes there, and I hope I'm wrong. I just don't think they have the votes there. I, I don't think it should pass. So I'm well, happy if it and, doesn't. And I think I that, don't think we need recreational marijuana. And I think the Republicans state, have state. a shot at passing it, yeah. and will get support if it's a run government program, which I think a lot of people are against, uh, by the way. But hey, yeah, um, they, they, I think they're throwing that out the window. No, but, I do think they yeah. do too. But okay. anyway, anyway, but don't forget, Thanks, don't Mortgage. forget every week we're on Facebook Live. You can find yep. us on YouTube and Twitter. House of Strauss. Yep. Go and, out and make a difference in the world. Hey, New Mexico, never give up and always find a way. God bless you.